All right, there is the first shot. You just saw it there. There was a big explosion and the ship is going down and then there was a secondary explosion which could have been caused by ammunition in the hold. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and in today's video, we are back with recreating the disasters. Today, we're focusing on the Lusitania, so yeah guys, let's get into the video. So here we are, we are docked up in New York City, and I'm gonna hand it over to Jay Killen to talk about the history of the Lusitania up to this point. So yeah, Jay Killen. Yeah, so the Lusitania was a British ocean liner that was owned by the Cunard Line, and it was briefly the world's largest passenger ship at the time until the completion of the Mauritania three months later. The Lusitania was commissioned by Cunard as a response to the increased competition from rival transatlantic passenger companies, in which her keel was laid on August 17th in 1904, and she was launched on June 7th in 1906. Testing of the ship's engines took place in June of 1907 prior to her full trial scheduled for July, where the ship achieved speeds of 25.6 knots in one mile. At high speeds, the ship was found to suffer intense vibrations at the stern, which rendered the second-class accommodations uninhabitable, and the vibration was caused by interference between the wake of the outer propellers and inner propellers, which was made worse when turning. The solution was to add internal stiffening to the stern of the ship, but this would require the second-class areas to be gutted and rebuilt. The Lusitania was around 100 feet shorter in length and slightly thinner in width than the Olympic-class vessels, with those White Star Line vessels weighing an additional 15,000 tons in comparison to Cunard's Lusitania. On January 10th in 1910, the Lusitania encountered a rogue wave measuring around 75 feet tall while on her voyage from Liverpool to New York. Lusitania's bow shape allowed her to break through the wave which led the forecastle to be damaged along with the bridge windows being smashed. When Lusitania was built, her construction and operating expenses were subsidized by the British government with the condition that she would be converted to an armed merchant cruiser if need be. An additional secret compartment was designed for the purpose of carrying arms and ammunition. And when World War I was declared in 1914, she was requisitioned by the British Admiralty as an armed merchant cruiser. During the ship's first eastbound crossing after the war started, she was painted in a gray color scheme in an attempt to mask her identity and make her more difficult to detect visually. The threat of submarines and U-boats began to rise by early 1915 as Germany began to use them to attack naval vessels. In response to this new submarine threat, some alterations were made to the ship's protocols where she was ordered not to fly any flags in the war zone, and that brings us up to where we are now, which is on May 1st, 1915, before she departed New York for the last time. So yeah, that's amazing to know that the ship actually survived a rogue wave right to the face, pretty much. And it actually damaged the ship pretty extensively up there. And it even bent in the superstructure a little bit, which is very concerning. But luckily it was fixed and the ship continued on as normal. Now, the regular livery for the Lusitania was this. You have the red funnels with the black tops, and you don't have a yellow shear stripe. But, since war came around, the ship was changed and altered to look like this. So this is how the ship would look like pretty much forever, because obviously it sank. Spoiler alert. But, uh, yeah. Now, I know that you're in U-20, but where are you right now? Because we don't have the coast of Ireland or Ireland in the game, as far as I'm aware. So, how do we make this accurate? Well, I'm just off of the coast of Southampton a bit, and I can actually see this other landmass, so I guess you could also say that this would be Ireland, so hopefully that would be accurate enough. Alright, that sounds good. I guess that'll work. I know that the game isn't super accurate with its sort of landmasses, so we're just kind of going off of what we have. And, uh, yeah, so now we're just waiting for the time to depart. Now, before we leave, I want to know what was actually on board the ship military-wise. So the Lusitania was actually carrying around 4,200 cases of Remington rifle cartridges and an additional 1,250 cases of shrapnel shells and fuses. Now, was this normal practice or was this something that was kind of held from the public? Uh, I believe it was held from the public because I assume that if passengers knew what was being carried that they would get worried about, you know, being a target. Well, that would make sense. So let's go ahead and let's depart. So uh, here we go. So we're gonna put the engines in reverse and we are gonna sail out of here. So uh, yeah, here we go. So as you can see, the Lusitania is making its way towards Southampton and uh, looks like nothing's gonna go wrong. Now there is an AI sub in this area, so we're just gonna ignore that if it does torpedo us. I mean, that's not gonna be super realistic for right now. So yeah, we'll just sort of pump out the water and everything will be fine. All right, I don't see it, so I think we're good. I guess we are fine. Oh, nope, and we got torpedoed. Wow, that thing just popped out of nowhere. All right, and it disappeared, so uh, yeah. But luckily, we are all good. 
Now, Jake Hillen, do you want to talk about the rivalry between Cunard ships and White Star ships, mainly the Lusitania or the Mauritania and the Olympic class? Yeah, so Cunard's motto was speed over luxury, I guess, in which it did have some luxurious interiors. But it, as was mentioned before, the ship suffered from heavy vibrations and they had to make many revisions to try and help fight against that. And it wasn't until the Oceanic II for White Star Line for them to switch over to be more comfortable instead of focusing on speed. And that's not to say that the Cunard ships didn't have amazing interiors. They did. It's just they focused on speed and the Olympic class focused on luxury, as Jake Hillen said. Now, I've got to mention that Lusitania has been one of the most requested ship sinkings in the Recreating the Disaster series, and that's just amazing. I've seen dozens upon dozens of comments requesting this episode, so it's great that I'm actually getting to it. And I've also got to thank my members and super supporters. They get first pick on which one they want to see. I give them three ships, and they vote on which one they want to see first, and then second, and then third. So, yeah, they have been monetarily supporting the channel and also supporting this series too. So I've got to thank everyone that has supported this series. It's been amazing and I really appreciate it. But anyways, let's get on with the voyage. So it's almost 5 in the morning, so the sun should be coming up in any moment. And we do have a bit of a hailstorm, which is interesting. Despite this storm, the Lusitania is chugging on and working its way towards Southampton at full speed. Now, the watertight doors are closed, but it is moving at 21 knots, which is pretty impressive. So on May 7th, 1915, when the Lusitania was bound for Liverpool from New York, she was sailing parallel to the southern coast of Ireland when the vessel crossed in front of U-20. It was thought that due to her high speed, any U-boat would have difficulty with catching the fast vessel. The order was given for U-20 to fire the first and only torpedo, which struck Lusitania's bow off to the starboard side just beneath the bridge. Moments later, a second explosion occurred within her hull where the torpedo struck, all which led to the Lusitania to founder rapidly with a great list to starboard. Does that mean I'm in danger? Maybe. All right, there is the first shot. You just saw it there. There was a big explosion and the ship is going down and then there was a secondary explosion which could have been caused by ammunition in the hold. It's sort of debated on what that explosion was, but we are now continuing forward while we're sinking, which is really interesting. It sort of reminds me of the Britannic. Now, as you can see, boats are getting away, but in real life, it was much more difficult to get these boats off. There was a mass panic. People were running, jumping into boats. Some boats collapsed into the ocean. It was really, really bad. And several people did die because of this. With the bow of the Lusitania flooding, it's gonna make it worse as water floods down into the ship from there and brings it down even faster. And look at this, the boat deck is already awash. Look at that. Now it is debated whether the funnels collapsed or not. There is theories where the funnels don't collapse. I did accidentally forget to turn it off for this. You can see there are only two funnels remaining. The stern is coming out of the water and there are the props. Half of the ship is already gone and it's gone so fast. In real life, the ship took only 18 minutes to sink, which doesn't give you much time to survive at all, especially if you're down inside the ship. Getting out is going to be a nightmare. You can see the stern is coming out of the water in real life. She sank a lot more shallower than this, where she sort of slipped under and hit bottom and then settled down. But currently, we're in a little bit of deeper water, so she's not going to do that. She's going to go down like that documentary uh, created about the Lusitania. I think it's more like a film, but it's got some great CGI in there. And as you can see, look at that. The stern is almost vertical there, and it's going down. You can see the hundreds of people in the water. Now, I should mention, even though it was May, the water was still freezing cold. This is not like your backyard pool. This is the Atlantic Ocean, and it stays pretty chilly at all times of the year. And uh, in May, it was chilly enough that people started freezing to death or dying. And there goes the Lusitania slipping under. It's about to go under, and there it is. So now all that remains is lifeboats and people in the water. The ship is now sinking to the bottom and let's see how it lays on the bottom. I wanna see if it'll be accurate. It's sort of on its side in real life. And there it is, yeah, there we go. Now, Jay Kellen, do you wanna talk about the aftermath of the sinking? Because it was pretty big. 
Yeah, so among the dead were 128 American citizens, and immediately after this uh, news came out, it incited international outrage, especially from the United States, and it quickly turned public opinion against Germany and its allies. And it was also one of the reasons, not the reason, but one of the reasons why America went to war with Germany in World War I. So, uh, yeah, a very interesting story with the Lusitania. So, there we go. So, yeah, if you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you next time, guys. Goodbye.